All right, guys, thanks for coming back today. My name is Stan the Dirt Monkey, and we've got a pretty intense project with a lot of different moving components. We got called out that there was a boulder retaining wall that washed out, and by the time we got to the site, there were massive boulders just precariously balancing on top of each other, which could have been pretty bad if one of those toppled over and somebody was near it. But that's not all we're doing today. We were also gonna be converting an unusable area of this job site to a dry creek bed. And then we're gonna be building a ramp up and over a retaining wall to gain access to a completely new portion of the project. And as if that wasn't enough, we're gonna be removing and demolishing a pond and then converting that into a patio. So what are we waiting for? Let's dive into this very first part of it. We get a good start to the day with just a few minor issues. Oh, that's not good. The hydraulics are locked out and the bobcat won't Put respond. that up here. I know the, it's this little piece, there's a little piece of metal right down there. Yeah. The boys want to get the mini X and a set of slat tracks, which is a bridging system to help them cross soft grounds loaded onto the trailer, but they've got another challenge ahead of them. Is it gonna start? No, probably not. The Volvo doesn't like us, everybody talks all bad about it. Let's see if Betty pops off. Boom, look at that. This thing has been sitting since this winter and it cranked over right away. This got used a couple of days ago and wouldn't even start up. There's a spot at this new job where we're gonna be having to cross over a little bit of the patio. Uh, so normally that would entail laying a whole bunch of plywood out. I'm not a big fan of doing that. Blaine is really not a fan of doing that. So we are bringing, bringing out the slat tracks. The cat skid loader's already been delivered to the site, so these are the last two pieces of the puzzle that need to show up. Somehow Sam makes greasing equipment sound exciting. Good morning, gorgeous. Holy crap. Yeah, that's the... This wash out. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's not a little washout. That's the small one. No, there's like nothing that. holding on here. here. Yeah, this one over here is like going all the way up the hill. Some sections of the retaining wall had washed out so much that it had washed all of the backfill away, just leaving boulders precariously balanced on top of each other. I gotta fill that bad boy in. Each washout has its own unique challenges. The boys decide to start with the easier of the two. The first washout, the site is tight and cramped and needs a little bit of trimming before they can even begin. I'll cut those off. I'll cut those off. The boys start to put together their plan and realize just how much dirt they're gonna be dealing with. Four or five inches. That's about from the bottom of the siding. So the top of that's about five, six inches. And that's about what we want. 
Wait, so oh, that's there's about a lot. Deep. There's a lot coming out. And it's here. gonna keep going down that way. That is. Yeah, that's gonna yeah. be a decent amount of dirt. Yeah. Their first priority is to get that washout filled in. Once that's done, they know the rest of the dirt can be used for other things. Blaine finally finds a little sweet spot where he can spin the excavator all the way around. Here's where it gets a little bit tricky. If he packs too much behind the retaining wall, the roots of the vegetation that we want to grow won't be able to penetrate the soil. So he's got to pack just right. Too much compaction, the vegetation won't grow, the wall will wash out again within a year. Too little compaction, then the soil won't stay, the wall will wash out before a year. You get it just right and everything works in harmony. But we do get to test that before this job is done. We have three rains, three days of rain coming. When the walls washed out, much of that dirt washed directly right on top of the house and that has to be scraped away. But the controls of this old Bobcat mini excavator are loose and sloppy, making it a little bit more of a challenge. All right, the first little bit of this project is wrapped up. We filled in the first washout. We brought that up almost three feet behind that boulder wall. So it's been washing out pretty bad. That first one's done. We are gonna continue, continue grading out in between the house, garage and the wall here. Probably start up in here. This is some kind of grate. This is what's catching all their water now. You can see where all their water goes. They had a guy out here just to forewarn you with a skid steer to try to work this area. Whoa! He was working it and just sunk. So, damn. So be careful next to the house if this is really that wet, or maybe it was just a. I mean, it doesn't feel like it walking on it, but I don't see the ground doing the jello thing. Did you look inside at the foundation? No. That might be smart. Because if he already sunk into it, that foundation could have been cracked. We don't know what the condition of that soil is, and we don't know what the condition of that foundation is. So we're going to try to keep as much dynamic load off from the foundation of that house as possible. That means we're going to do everything the tedious, monotonous way with the mini excavator. But that's also the safe way. In this area, what we're going to be installing is a dry creek bed. This is what Tim is calling riprap. eight yards of rocks right there. But they've got to get them in place and that means they've got to start the construction of the ramp over the retaining wall. I think we uh, probably be able to. This is gonna be cozy getting back there, back here. Yeah, I think it'll be all right. I think you're gonna to want to build the ramp up this way. Yeah. So you can so you can come up over here. Yeah, that's always that's always sketchy. They've got too much dirt where the dry creek bed is going to be installed, but that doesn't mean that dirt's going to get wasted. That's going to be used to build the road to gain access to the other side of the house. But 
the sight is too tight for the cat skid loader to even turn. So the Bobcat mini excavator has to come in and move any loose boulders or other obstructions to the site so that the cat skid loader can gain full access to the backyard and start building the ramp. They need the slat tracks because they've got to access the back of the yard by crossing over a paver patio. Then they've got to build a ramp up and over the lower retaining wall so they can get the cat skid loader up into the terrace to finish the work. Even though they're working together on the same site, the deck cuts off access to the backyard, so it forces them to go the long way around. Small bucket fulls mean less dirt spilled on the street and more dirt going where it needs to be. But it also means more trips back and forth. It is a catch-22. All my shelters are opening Feels like everything's crumbling with a pretty substantial drop off on the right side of his machine, Sam has to be extra careful as he's building this ramp. So they build the dry creek bed at the same time that they build the ramp in the back, using the material for one to build the other. trench for our dry riverbed is all done. So we got a more of a, a gradual pitch kind of down the right here where this track is. And we got a very hard aggressive pitch going down from this side. They've imported stone to build the dry creek bed, but they've also got some on site they can reuse. Yeah, you want to pop some, yeah, while you're popping these out, I'll get some of that fabric down and by the time you get some of these out, I'll will you be good to start dumping. A heavy woven boulder fabric is laid below the dry creek bed. To avoid driving over the fabric, which could potentially get torn or dislodged, they lay this dry creek bed out in sections, but any rock that spills off from the fabric has to be picked up. After the initial coat goes down, they've still got to go back and add the character stones. That's larger stones that'll give it a naturalistic feeling, but also smaller stones and filling in any spaces that that black fabric shows through from above. Now the customer could never grow vegetation between the wall and this house because of silt and runoff and then the extreme shading. The purpose of this dry creek bed is to give them something decent to look at and we want to make sure we accomplish that. But it's also to help catch and direct any runoff. So we also want to accomplish that as well. So this side along the house we're going to do, you know, plantings, good ground covery stuff like hostas and whatnot. But we're kind of randomly just setting some stones through there and along our little creek bed. and. Uh, we are going to put some smaller river rock kind of scattered around in here a little bit. We're going to do that just, just give it a little more authenticity, you know, 
uh, break up break up the size of the stones that we're using all right on the next part of this project we're gonna wrap up this dry creek bed we're gonna build that ramp up and over the retaining wall we're gonna start the grading and we're gonna tackle the biggest washout on the job site plus we're also gonna get started on demolishing and removing that pond and converting it over into a patio so make sure you guys come back because that one is going to be coming up right down the pipeline so make sure you stick around god bless go get them and we'll see you probably tomorrow